So today I'm going to talk about how it is that I got into West Coast Straussianism. And to be honest, it's quite an improbable thing to get into West Coast Straussianism, especially if you're like me and you didn't go to college, or rather you started to go to college but you thought it was silly. So, you know, laugh out loud. I know most viewers won't know what West Coast Straussianism is, or rather, you know, maybe only people who, who have some idea would click on this video, but you know what I mean. So, real quick, I'll explain what it is. Now, in general, Straussianism, uh, I characterize as the belief that hashtag ancient Greek lives matter, right? Or it's the idea that classical thought is superior to modern thought, right? Now, these are just going to be real quick descriptions. Should be discussed at length. This is just real quick. Now, there's there's the crisis of the Strauss divided, right? There's there's the the East Coast West Coast split, right? So, East Coast Straussians believe that America is a product of modern thought, and you know, so they infer that America is low and base, right? Because classical thought is what is superior. But West Coast Straussians believe that America is, in fact, a product of classical thought, right? And I'm, I'm a West Coast Straussian. So, classical thought, for me anyway, and I think this is a fair statement, especially revolves around Plato and Aristotle. And I had tried to get into Plato when I was young, and I failed, right? I tried to read The Republic, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is brutal. I can't do this. I didn't... I think I finished book one and I put it away. I, and the reason for this especially was because I was into Mark Levin, the radio host. Right? I, I still like Mark Levin. I wish he would just Strauss it up already. But at the time, my favorite book on philosophy was his book, Ameritopia. I still like that book. Don't get me wrong. But it has like a Karl Popper-esque analysis of the Republic. Right? So, in other words, it presents Plato in, in a certain way, as a totalitarian, right, as someone that, you know, like, why, why would you consider Plato other than to understand totalitarianism? <laughs> so anyway, I also, I have this friend, here's where the story begins, about how I got into West Coast Jasonism. I have a friend, Nick, right, and... He's like a heavy metal guitar player, and you know the way that I put him is that he believes that that Ingve Malmsteen leads a sort of ideal life, right? It's you know it's sort of a an exaggeration of what Nick is like, but just just to give you a quick idea, right? That's what he believes, right? And one day I was I was uh, talking to him on the phone, and he told me that well he knew that I'm a big Ted Cruz fan. And he told me, oh, Derek, Ted Cruz's career is over, right? This, this was probably in 2014 sometime, early 2014, maybe February. Ted Cruz's career is over because Jimmy Fallon played a clip of his Winston Churchill impression on The Late Show and mocked him for it, right? And I was like, oh, gee, well, you know, I don't know about that. I'm going to have to check this out, right? And so I go to check it out, and instead of going to the Jimmy Fallon clip, I don't know if I ever saw it. I decided to see the original clip, and it turns out what was going on is that Ted Cruz was receiving a Winston Churchill Award, right? And he was giving a speech at the Claremont Institute for that, right? And at about 12 minutes into it, he, uh, he gives a shout out to a man named Harry Jaffa, right? He refers to him as one of our nation's greatest thinkers and scholars, right? You know, play clip one. And I have to say that I'm especially honored that we're joined by one of our nation's greatest thinkers and scholars, Dr. Harry Jaffa. So anyway, I watched this and figured Ted Cruz thinks this is one of our nation's greatest thinkers and scholars. And I've never heard of him. Harry Jaffa, right? I at least got to look him up on Wikipedia, right? And when I, when I looked, I saw that he was a Lincoln scholar. And I was already into Lincoln. I had been into Lincoln for a number of years. And it probably had Stephen Smith's quote that 
Jaffa had written the best Lincoln book ever, right? And that's about Crisis of the House Divided. And by the way, Jaffa, who I'm talking about, is the founder of West Coast Straussianism. So, I watched a YouTube video of Harry Jaffa, the, the first part of his interview with Peter Robinson, and at about five minutes he says that the debate between Lincoln and, and Douglas was not just similar to, but identical to, the debate between Socrates and Thrasymachus in Book One of the Republic. Right? You know, uh, I'll, I'll let you see the, the context here. It's a, it's a nice little a nice little speech by this this really old man, Harry Jaffa. He's like the oldest man you'll ever see have a serious conversation. You know, play clip two. Uh, in 1946, I was in a used bookstore on Fourth Avenue in New York when I was a graduate student at the New School and I was studying with Strauss. And I happened to pick up a copy of the Lincoln Douglas debates. It was my custom in those days, if I found a book in a bookstore that I liked, I'd come back each day to read through a little more of it, since I didn't have any money. <laughs> but I somehow scraped, scraped up five dollars to pay for this copy of the Lincoln Douglas debates. I had taken no courses in American history, and either as an undergraduate or as a graduate student. And but I fell in love with the debates just because it was such wonderful reading, and it occurred to me. So it was the language. The first point of contact was 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 the was the was the, the power of the language. Well, not. Uh, I, I saw that there was something classical. I was studying with Strauss, and uh, I didn't see this right away, but I did after a while, that, that the issue between Lincoln and Douglas was I did, not similar to, but identical to the difference between Socrates and Thrasymachus in the first book of the Republic. This question of whether, whether or not the people make the, make the moral law or the moral law makes the people. Uh, Thrasymachus says justice is the interest of the stronger, which in a democracy means justice is whatever the, the demos, the, the many, were. In a tyranny, it's whatever the tyrant wants to do. In an oligarchy, it's whatever the rich want to do. But there was no idea of any law controlling the decision of the peop people who made these decisions. Uh, Stephen A. Douglas's position was that he let the people rule. So anyway, at this point, I paused the video, went and read the first book of the Republic, and I've been reading it ever since. Right? And now I hashtag Strauss it up, hashtag West Saida. Right? 